Welcome everybody to Unfiltered with Pastor David. Pastor David, welcome and yeah. Happy New Year to everybody. It, it, you, I was just thinking about it's already January tenth, mm -hmm. and we went we swooped through Christmas and we got through the New Year and we're just right now off camera making plans for this upcoming year and it's already seeming that uh, what the Lord's going to be doing through our fellowship in twenty twenty three. Uh, I'm excited for it and uh, you know what. As as a senior pastor, pastor, and, and now going on what the 40, 42nd year of our church, how does each new year? How's it different for you? Is it always the same? Okay, we're going to see what the Lord does, or is there a sense of an excitement that you may have as we go into the new year every year with a sense of okay, Lord, let's see what you're going to do again this year. You know, I think that every pastor ought to live with the, with that kind of question in their heart: What does the Lord want to do? And so, yeah, I generally will go into the new calendar year with that, with that mentality. Um, we were just just prior to shooting this, um, just we're having a conversation with uh, our staff member, one of our staff gals, Mo, and we're talking about uh, things uh, that we can do for the upcoming year. So, I just think that uh, that with the Lord. Uh, there's always something new. There's always something he wants to do that's fresh. And so I, I, I begin the year with that attitude. It's not necessary, ne necessarily true that I have five new things. <laughs> I don't do that. I just, I just have an idea that whatever the Spirit wants to lead us to do, I, wanna, I want to be in the midst of that. And right. that's how we begin the year. Yeah, it's exciting. We're just, again, talking about it. We've got some great things coming up. Uh, Pastor, that was, so that was kind of off topic. The question I wanted to ask, uh, as we do on Filter today, came from a question that I received from one of our brothers on Sunday, and uh, and so it's a little, it's a twofold question, but it has to do with us Christians. How would we respond to an invitation to a either a party, a reception, a wedding that may have lots of alcohol and drinking, and responding to uh, an invitation to attend a same-sex marriage. So as believers, is there a boundary that we draw to say, nope, it's either, it, no, we can't do that, or are we to go out there and be salt and light, or how do we respond? And that's a difficult question because there's so very many variations of, of uh, for example, the, the wedding that will have alcoholic beverages. There's so many variations of, of the situations and conditions that, that come into play. Uh, example, when Marie and I were planning our, our, our wedding, my father-in-law approached me and said, uh, Dave, I want to have an open bar, right? And so I said, no. I said, that, that we're not going to have that. So I had, I had some control over that because that was something I was involved in. And then, then there's the well, I'm being invited to something, we'll say, to, to officiate a wedding. And so I, I would ask, in, in the past, I would ask, um, what, what are your plans for your reception? Oh, we're going to have this, 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 and that. We're going to have an open bar. And so I would have options at that time. And so from my perspective, I would share and I'd say, listen, I'm going to officiate a wedding that is to honor Jesus Christ, and and I'm and and we ha we had already spoken of this, so I'd say, and you have said, you want to bring honor to Him. So, how is it that you're going to honor Him by giving people an opportunity to overdrink? How how is that going? And so we'd have that conversation. Um, so, there it, it depends. It depends on the situation. Now, if I'm just a guest, if I'm being invited. Then um, I might, I would. My wife and I uh, would be free to to attend the wedding, and then I would have to make a choice as to whether or not I would feel comfortable or be comfortable in an environment where people were not just drinking but over drinking. And so at that point, I have to make some decisions as as it relates to to those conditions and all. And I think everybody at a certain point has to decide what they think is best for them, their walk with the Lord, their witness, and, and, uh, and the things that people will read into your decisions. Mm -hmm. All of those things have to be considered, and you should do that prayerfully 
and you should think those things through as thoroughly as you can in order that you're able to make the best decision for you. For and you when it comes to the lesbian or homosexual uh, wedding, that's something that, that I won't attend. I will not attend that. Why is that? Because I'm harsh and I'm judgmental. I'm unloving, right? No, the reason is because uh, a wedding is a, is a service to honor God. And, um, you know, God, is, God has made it a holy thing. And so because of that, uh, I cannot participate, personally cannot participate. I would never officiate such a thing, but I cannot participate in something that has been established uh, by God, mm. husband and wife, uh, to produce children, uh, to honor Him. Um, I cannot participate in something that is, is certainly not honoring to the Lord. So I've, I have no problem in not attending such a thing myself. I don't and would not. Would I go to a reception afterwards? Possibly. It's a pos it, I, I haven't been put in the position where I'd have to decide. Right. I, I would have to think, again, through all the conditions for, pertaining to that. But uh, as, in, in general, no, I personally will not attend. Why? Because my presence there would give a sense of this being an okay thing. That guy's a pastor, has been ministering for years. Certainly this is an okay thing. And in that, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Please forgive us if you hear the beeping. It sounds like they're working on the alarm panels. Oh, okay. And it's uh, it's coming through one of our offices. And, and, and you know, the, the other thing that has to be considered too is the awareness of, of let's say, being invited to a, a reception where there's gonna be alcoholic beverages. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I've learned early on is people like to post pictures on social media. Oh, that's very true. And, uh, and if I'm around a picture that may, or a, 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 a table that has a alcoholic beverage on there, they can very easily assume that it's mine mm -hmm. and it can cause stumbling. Mm -hmm. So even being aware of that, I, I've learned to, but, but I get a lot of questions about the same-sex marriages. Mm -hmm. And that, that makes uh, sense because it's almost, almost uh, uh, you're confirming that act or that, that ceremonial act that, as we believe, is one of the most holy institutions that we can have before it the is. Lord. And so uh, uh, that, that is a, you know, for me at least, a, a deal breaker. That, that's For me also. And, uh, but at the same time, going to uh, a reception where we can be salt and light to whether there's alcoholic beverages there or not is being able to show the love of Christ. Well, you know, that, that, that's really a very important way to think. I, I, really, I, I, I really believe that we have to understand that, that, that we are called by Christ himself. You are the light of the world. You know, he, he speaks of us as having that saltiness. You know, and uh, the idea that we don't take that into where we go, we're not aware of that. Um, well, that's something that I think we need to really, we, we need to consider. Where I am um, gives me opportunity to share, and I do, and, and I, I, on a personal level, uh, I don't necessarily have a, an aversion, per se, to those who are caught in sin. Um, you know, I, I, I see sin as being what it is, and, and there are different, you know, different levels of, of um, degrees of its, its um, effect on people. I realize that. But when it comes to something like uh, going to a wedding that, is, that truly isn't a marriage in the sight of right. God, it may be a legal document or a contract, and regarded in that fashion here in the United States. But God doesn't honor that. And so I'm a person who presents God's word to people. I represent mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So for me to, to be present as if blessing such a, such a uh, ceremony, it would be wrong for me. And again, I, I don't necessarily want to go to um, any kind of reception where there's going to be you know, drinking and the possibility of over drinking. And um, so I don't do that. I avoid those things. And of course, there's, you know, the, the response that we maybe get on here is, you know, the haters and, and um, not, uh, not really understanding that 
the, it's not because the people are being hated. It's because the act of marriage itself is is ordained by the Lord. Well, by now, John, those who disagree with me have already turned this off. <laughs> you know, that's just a fact. We know that because they don't have the capacity to listen to something they don't agree with. So they mentally cancel you and just... And so those people are already gone right now. And the others who have remained, they need to understand that uh, if they have a disagreement with this, they're disagreeing really with a lot of scriptural principles as it refers to stumbling a believer mm. and, and being an example of a believer. And um, you know, those who may think, well, it's no big deal, don't understand that that God is holy and the institution of marriage is holy. You ought to read the book of Malachi closely and they'll see it very clearly. First Corinthians, Paul speaks about it and they ought to really look at it and say, oh, this means something more than just two people standing in front of a man and witnesses. This is a holy vow, a sacred institution. And um, they, they, need to, they need to grow up right. in their faith. And again, you know, for us to even have to say that we don't hate these people or whatever, it just shows how much of the world has gotten into the thinking right. process. Of, of believers because even in an unbelieving world that I grew up in prior to getting saved in 1970 in, in the 50s and the 60s in this United States, this wouldn't have been a question. <laughs> there, would, there would not have been a question as to whether or not there would be such a thing as a homosexual marriage or any, anything related to that. That would not have been a question because they knew morally that this was wrong. But because of the brainwashing that has taken place through the uh, psychological associations and all that have actually made that a normalized behavior. And because we have allowed the law to dictate our conscience in the way that we have, there are, there are many Christians who are biblically ignorant of what the scripture says concerning who we are. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I, I heard a woman on one of these talk shows, I think it was I think it was the five, I'm pretty sure it was, in which she said that Jesus would be at the front of the uh, gay pride parades. He would be marching in the front of it. See, so that's the ignorance of people as it pertains to God and holiness and the institution of marriage and things of that nature. And so those who would have a disagreement uh, are not thinking through this. Mm. They're, they're brainwashed by the world and need to really consider that that we are in the world, but we're not of it. Right. And, and that we need to have a, a difference. And it's not a self-righteous thing to stand up for righteousness. Uh, and that's what you and I are supposed to do, right. John, as ministers of the gospel. And so, no, I would not attend a ceremony that is sacrilegious, that is blasphemous, in that God did not ordain two men or two women to get married. Mm -hmm. And for me to be there, would be giving an imprimatur on that, to, to give it some kind of uh, validation and blessing. I won't do that. It's all summed up in the depravity of Pontius Pilate's question to Jesus, what is truth? What is truth? And uh, when we have the truth, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, and when you mm -hmm. think about it, that's, that's the whole depravity of, of what you were just saying about people's truth and so I and mean, that's another that's another unfiltered we can Some do other time. yes We've and so <laughs> pastor thank you so much uh for sharing with us and want to thank you guys for tuning in and joining us and want to invite you to our wednesday evening service tomorrow at 7 p.m as pastor you're taking us through first john, first john. chapter four mm -hmm. uh and it looks like we'll be wrapping up chapter About 14 four. through 21 14 to 21 <laughs> invite you guys to come out and join us then we have our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and mm -hmm. 10.45. Great opportunity to hear God's word, invite friends and family, and men. Uh, you can go online or even stop by the gazebo after any of our services and purchase your ticket for the Super Bowl breakfast, which is going to be February 4th. We have Anthony Munoz. He's going to be our guest speaker. Mm -hmm. We invite you guys to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. It's going to be a great time. Thank you guys for tuning in. And Pastor, thank you so much for Amen. sharing with us. God bless you guys. Thank you.